This will begin a series of lectures on the exchange rate. So we'll focus on the nominal exchange rate, then the real exchange rate, then the trade weighted index, and then we'll move on to purchasing power parity. But for this lecture, we'll focus on the concept of the nominal exchange rate and the forces that determine the nominal exchange rate. So the nominal exchange rate is the price of one currency in terms of another. And we can, we're very familiar with the nominal exchange rate because it comes up very often in our daily lives. So at the moment, the Australian dollar, so one dollar AUD, is trading around 90 US cents. US dollars. And that's an example of a nominal exchange rate. It can be written in two ways. Firstly, it can be written as a direct quote, or it can be written as an indirect quote. So for example, a direct quote is how much of the domestic currency is required to purchase one unit of foreign currency. So this is a direct quote. Say we need a dollar o five AUD to buy one dollar USD. This is an example of a direct quote. So how much of the domestic currency we need to buy a unit of foreign currency. An indirect quote, however, is how much the foreign currency is required to purchase one unit of domestic currency. So if we have, say, one AUD, how much of foreign currency is needed to buy uh, one domestic currency? So this would be an example of an indirect quote here. So we'll look at another example. So one unit to, to say, 29 Thai baht. So that's an example of an indirect quote. So we we see the indirect quote very often. This comes up in uh, news broadcasts and um, in our day to day lives. But we don't see the direct quote very often. But there, these are the two ways we can um, measure or show the exchange rate. So as we know in Australia, we have what is called a floating exchange rate. So the exchange rate, rather than being fixed by the RBA, so rather than being fixed, we uh, have a floating exchange rate. So it is determined by the forces of supply and demand. So determined by the forces of supply and demand. So we're going to look at how supply and demand can actually affect the exchange rate. So let's just rub this out and to give us some a little bit more room to see how the exchange rate is determined or the nominal exchange rate to be more precise. So like any supply and demand curve we have Quantity, so in this case, quantity would be here, so quantity traded. And let's look at the market for the Australian dollar. So this is the quantity traded being the x-axis, and the price would then just be the exchange rate. Okay, so let's look at why the demand curve is again downward sloping. So the demand curve in, of an exchange rate is also downward sloping. And this is because as the price of an exchange rate decreases, therefore people would tend to purchase more of that because the exports of that country would therefore be cheaper. So we look at this in a direct quoted fashion. So we have AUD to USD. So how much one AUD is required to buy uh, 
a unit or units of US dollars. So the demand curve is downward sloping and we have a supply curve which is upward sloping, which is because as the exchange rate goes up, people are willing to sell more of their dollar. And so we meet this price again at an equilibrium point here. And we're going to call this E, E1. So if we draw drag the lines out, we can see that we have an equilibrium quantity traded there of Q1 and an exchange rate of P1. But we're not going to call this P1. We're going to refer to this as the fundamental value of the currency which is also the same as the equilibrium price. So this is equal to the equilibrium price. And so the value of the Australian dollar is determined by forces of supply and demand. So let's look at what happens if the demand curve shifts to the right. So because, say possibly this is due to exports being more attractive, or better quality in terms of the world, people would want to purchase more of Australia's exports. So let's say the Great Barrier Reef, uh, there was something magical that happened to the Great Barrier Reef and people wanted to uh, go there and experience it themselves. And so the demand for tourism in the economy would increase and therefore to become a tourist, people would then have to buy Australian dollars and therefore the demand of the Australian dollars would shift to the right from D1 to D2. So at the original fundamental value of the currency which we're going to call say exchange little e1 the equilibrium exchange rate we're going to see that if we drag this out after the, after the shift in demand we're going to see that the, the quantity supplied is in fact at E1 or Q1 here, but the quantity demanded is at Q2. And as we can see, that the, there is a shortage of the AUD. And so what the bank does, or what people do, is tend they tend to expand their supply of the currency in the foreign exchange market. So people will try to uh, trade more currency in the exchange market rather than holding on to the currency they will trade more currency or supplies of the currency would increase their supply and this will cause an expansion in the currency or expansion in supply so rather than holding on to your currency people would trade it on the foreign exchange market or investors would, would um, trade it on the foreign exchange market and so when the price increases, the demand will slowly go down because as tourists you want to um, get the best deal possible and when the exchange rate goes up, then there is less incentive for you to actually travel to Australia because of the high cost of the holiday. And so eventually the market will reach its new equilibrium here at E2. And now as you can see, we have a new fundamental value of the exchange rate at E2, little e2, and a new equilibrium quantity traded of Q3. So as we can see, the exchange rate or the nominal exchange rate changes because of either demand or change in the demand of the currency, or it can be a change in the supply. So let's look at the condition where we have a change in the supply of the currency. Changes in the supply. So let's take this away. We know that it's already been uh, determined by the forces of supply and demand. But now we're going to look at what happens when the supply changes. So again we have quantity and we have the exchange rate. Upward sloping supply and a downward sloping demand. And an equilibrium quantity or the fundamental value at Q1 and E1 here, which is the fundamental value of the exchange rate. So let's say for whatever reason supply of the currency decreases 
to S2. So there's less supply in the international market, maybe because people are importing less. Because consumer confidence has gone down. So people are importing less of overseas goods. And so we're going to supply less of the currency in the international foreign exchange market. And so what happens here is we can see that the new quantity supplied is at Q2 here, but the quantity demanded for the currency is at Q1 still. And this represents a shortage in the currency because supply is less than demand. And so what happens is that the price would slowly increase or the supply would slowly increase as there are will be arbitrage opportunities in this market. So the price of the currency will increase because of new profit opportunities. And when the price of the currency increases, the resulting effect will be a contraction in the demand. And as we know, we will reach a new equilibrium point at Q3 and E2. So that's how the currency or the exchange rate moves according to supply and demand conditions.